I'm going to show you how to make a window pane tote bag using my free Redwork poppy block. For this I'm going to be using a 4x4 hoop, two layers of no-show mesh, stabiliser, matching bobbin and thread, some masking tape, pins with heads on them, my squizzers, my fabrics and batting cut to size, some heat and bond thermal interfacing, hardware for the bag and some clips. You'll find a link to this design in the video description below. We're going to start off by hooping our two layers of no-show mesh. You could use cutaway stabiliser instead if you preferred. And then we're going to pin around the top edge of the hoop and that will anchor our stabiliser and stop it being pulled down through the two hoop pieces. Load your file into your machine along with your matching bobbin and thread and then you're going to stitch round number one and that's going to give you a placement outline for your batting. Place your batting over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure it. Trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line, taking care of course not to cut your stitches. Mark the centre on each edge of your um, fabric just by folding it in half, mark off and then you're going to place this in the middle of your hoop and you can use the markers on your hoop to line it all up and then take it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three. That's going to secure the fabric in place and then stitch the red work. And that's our block stitched as quick as that. We're now going to free this from the hoop. So our next job is to trim up our blocks. Um, I've stitched all mine out. Most of them I've trimmed apart from this one. You have to decide how wide you want your sashing to be between your blocks and I've decided that I want mine to be one inch which is twelve and a half millimeters so we need to cut our blocks to half of that from um, just inside this stitch line so this side of this stitch line and that is so that when we add our um, sashing this stitch line will be hidden by the sashing because we don't want two stitch lines showing. So I'm going to cut these to half an inch which is 12 and a half millimetres. You need to do the same with all your blocks that you're going to be using. I'm going to show you um, what we're going to be doing. I've already prepared one side of my bag and we're doing the other side in exactly the same way. So there's my vertical sashing, there's my horizontal sashing, top, bottom and sides. And the sides uh, are going to end up the same size as on the edge by the time it's been stitched together and we're going to do that on a sewing machine. Now the first thing that we have to do now that we've trimmed all our blocks up is to work out which way round our blocks are going to go. Now because this is the same um, on same block all round I've turned each one 90 degrees. So I'm going to set this aside for a minute. 
So I've got my four blocks and at the moment they're all round the right way but I'm going to turn each one so that it's facing in a different direction. So I'm going to turn that one that way, that one that way and that one that way. Once you've got your blocks laid out how exactly how you want them you need to label them because if you have to put your work down for any reason or it gets knocked if you've got pets or kids and you've got a lot of blocks you're not going to be too happy if um, they're all muddled up so always label and I go A1, B1, A2, B2 etc so I'm going to put that in the middle that way no matter what happens I'm going to know exactly where each block is going to go. Next we're going to mark in all our stitch guidelines. There's That's what we're going to stitch down when we join these. So we're going to do this on the back. Now if you've used a dark thread so that you can see it clearly then it makes your job very easily because all you've got to do is extend these lines top and bottom and you will stitch just inside that stitch line. If you use the white thread against white then you're going to need to draw a complete line just inside I'll show you here and you want to extend it all the way to the end and you're going to do that on all four sides of every block if you've used a darker thread like me then all you need to do is line up your ruler and top and tail it I call it. I'm going to put these in just so that you can follow. So every block will have um, a vertical and horizontal lines. I'm going to go and do the rest of my blocks. I'm not going to punish you by making you watch that and there we are all marked up the next job we're going to do is deal with our vertical sashing strips I'm going to turn this over okay so that's how our blocks are going to be paired I've got a piece of uh, bias binding and this is shop bought bias binding you can make your own if you prefer and these are going to go, these are going to be what joins the blocks together. Like that. And like that. So you want to cut your verticals taller than your blocks. And that gives you a little bit of wiggle room for trimming up. So we're now going to secure our first piece of sashing in place so place your sashing face down so right sides together to, you, to your block and line it up with the edge so that you've got a little bit of overhang top and bottom and we're going to stitch that on from the back so working from the back of your block stitch down the uh, guideline that you drew in and that will secure it. And I put this aside and do the same for my other two blocks. So face down, line up to the edge. This is why it's important to cut everything accurately. It makes your job so easy. So I'm now going to go and stitch these it's only straight lines we're going to be stitching so I'm not actually going to make you sit there and watch me stitch but I am going to use a high um, contrast thread so that you can see what I've done so there's my sashing attached to my first two blocks and when I pull that back you can see that this stitch line here around the edge has disappeared and that's what we want so I'm going to put that aside and I'm going to grab B1 because that's the neighbour to A1 and then we're going to line this up 
in exactly the same way. Now, once again, we want right sides together. So, that's the right side of my block and my sashing. And that's going to go here. And the other thing that we need to line up as well are these stitch lines here. Because if we don't, if they're, if they're off, it's going to be very obvious. And it's a good idea as well to put a clip oops, just on the sides so that you know that they're not going to shift when you take these clips off. So I'm now going to stitch along my stitch guideline on the back of this block. I'm also going to do the same with this pair. So fold that down. And same again, I'm going to stitch down this line on the back. And there, that's the front. And this is the back. So we're now going to trim up the excess from our sashing. Just line it up with the edge of your block. And trim it off. So that's our two rows. The more blocks you've got, you do exactly the same. You just repeat for, for between every single block. The only thing that we're not dealing with at the moment are the sides. So once our columns are stitched together, we're now going to stitch the rows together. And we're going to do exactly the same. Take a piece of sashing, binding, whatever you're using, and it needs to be slightly wider than your joined blocks and then we're going to do exactly the same so that's going to go on there let me just put that aside for a minute and again face down give yourself a little bit of overhang each end and then clip them in place I prefer clips um, because they don't distort like pins. As soon as you put a pin through something, it will distort the fabric, even if it's only very slightly, whereas clips don't. And once more, I'm going to stitch on the back along the stitch guideline that we drew in earlier. And there's my stitch line on the front. So now we need to do exactly the same as before. And this time we're going to do it here. I'll to lay that out flat. I know this is upside down for the minute, but I'm just going to finger press that. Then place your blocks down and this time you want to make sure that all these areas are aligned. And I'm going to put a clip on the side. And then I'm going to want these aligned. And 
now I'm going to stitch on the back here along this guideline here. So once more we're going to trim up the excess sashing by lining it up to the side of the blocks. We're now going to do the top and bottom sashing. When choosing whether to do sides first or top and bottom first, I do the longest edge last. So as this is square, I do top and bottom and then the sides, just personal preference. But if this was, say, another two blocks, I would do the sides and then the top and bottom. So the longest side last, basically. Okay. Now, because your sashing strips for the top and bottom aren't as thick as your blocks, you're going to want to pad them out a bit. And the best thing for that is heat and bond thermal um, interfacing. And I've cut a strip so that's the same width as my sashing, or should I say same length as my sashing, but I've left my seam allowance at the top here so that half inch or whatever you're doing it to you leave that without and that's because when you put this down and you go to stitch it when it flips back over it's not going to be bulky so the sides and top and bottom are really easy just line up your strips to the edge and then clip them in place. If you've never used um, heat and bond before, the rough side goes onto the fabric and you want to give it a, a really good press to give the glue a chance to melt. And then once it's taken, I give it a, a steam press as well. So I'm now going to do the other side. So again, face down. Now I'm going to stitch this on, on the back, following my guidelines that I drew in earlier. Okay, so my strips are stitched on here and along here. And you can now fold these back and press them if you want to. We're now going to trim up the excess on the ends. So line up your ruler with your block and just nip off the ends. So we're now going to do the same with the sides. So place your um, sashing strip face down, align it to the edge. And the same on the other side. And we're now going to stitch that along here and here. I have got my lines in, I just didn't draw them in all the way down. So now that they're stitched on, I've pressed them back and we're now going to trim up the ends. If you were making a quilt, you would stop here, add your backing fabric, you would cut it to the same size as your block, and then you would bind the edges, and that would be your quilt more or less done. 
So there's that panel and I've trimmed it up so that it's equal on all sides and that also matches the same dimensions as the panel that I'd already made. So that's the front and back taken care of. So once you've got your panel all trimmed up and equal on all sides, you want to cut a piece of backing fabric exactly the same size because that's going to be the lining of your bag. So you want two pieces like that, one for each panel. We now have to deal with side panels and a bottom for our bag. So you're going to cut a piece of fabric slightly longer than uh, your um, panel. In fact you want three pieces. You want one piece for the bottom and you want two for the sides. So six pieces of fabric in all and batting to match and then you're just going to stitch roughly around the edge just a very very thin border it's only to keep the batting in place for now that's all going to be hidden once we put the bag together so I'm going to go and stitch this now so we're now going to place the bottom onto our bag so turn your panel over face down and as before, you've got a little bit of wiggle room for trimming up afterwards. And then clip it into place. You're now going to stitch along here with a quarter inch seam allowance all the way down. So now that the bottom's stitched in place, I'm going to flip it up and then trim it up so that it's all level with the side panel the, sorry the front panel or the back panel whichever one it could be <laughs> and now we're going to add the sides exactly the same way except this time we're going to line it up to this crease so face down line up so that when it flips over this seam lines up with that crease and then we're going to do the same on the other side And then once again, quarter of an inch seam allowance down both sides. I'll line that up properly as well, I think. <laughs> so now that the side pieces are stitched on, we can now trim up the top so that it's uh, level with the, the top here. And now we're going to add the last panel and that's going to go face down. Make sure that you've got your uh, sides uh, correctly on the sides and not top and bottom. And then just line it up, clip it together and now you're going to stitch all the way down here using a quarter inch seam allowance. I do have a little tip for you. If your machine doesn't like um, stitching with the batting face down, if you get a piece of kitchen paper and stitch it to um, your panels at the same time, the, the paper on the back will smooth the way and you won't have any trouble stitching. So there's my stitch line. 
and that's the panel joined. Our next task is to create the tabs that will hold the D-rings for your uh, bag handles. I'm just going to put this aside a second. And what you need is some fabric and you want it four times the width that you want your handles. So if, for example, you're doing these at three quarters of an inch or two centimeters, you cut at eight or um, three inches. And then you press it in half, uh, press, your <laughs> press your fabric in half, and then edges to the center, the same as you would for bias binding then you want to cut them to length how long you have them is entirely up to you these are about nine um, centimeters oh, please don't ask me what that is in uh, um, inches let me think it's about just under three and a half inches and then you're going to stitch down each side fold it in half and then stitch down the end here and just use a very small um, seam allowance there and that will give you these and you need four of them one for each, uh, two for each side sorry so this is the let's say the front of my bag and the two sides and I'm going to fold this up because this is the um, the back of my bag and I'm just folding that up so that you can see um, both sides of it and you're going to place your um, tabs two at the top and you want the seam going towards the, the edge and you're going to do exactly the same for the other panel and then we're just going to clip them in place And you're just going to stitch uh, along the existing stitch line to secure them in place. And that's what I'm going to do now. So they're now stitched on. And I used um, two eighths of an inch seam allowance to stitch them on. So that the stitching that's uh, used to stitch them down won't show later on. Okay, so we're now going to join the sides to the back panel and the bottom as well. We do step by step. We do with the sides first. So you're going. I'm going to turn this around so you can see what I'm doing. You're going to take the sides, and you want to line the stitch line here of the sides up to this area here. That this this um, crease here that folds. Should I say join? <laughs> lots of words for it but they all, they're all the same thing so I'm going to place that you can see there I've lined it up now I'm just going to line it up with the edge and clip it in place and then just go all the way along I seem to have picked up some debris on the way so that the edges are married to the edges We're going to do the same on the other side and start at the bottom of your bag here so that you can get that in place correctly first. And now as we did when we put, added the sides to um, the front panel we're going to stitch a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way down on both sides to join them. And now that that's stitched you can see that the bag is nearly, well, it is 3D. <laughs> so now we're, get, we're come to do the um, bottom edges and we're going to do exactly the same. Line them up nice and flat like that and like that. And I'm going to put a pin in here just for a minute just so that you can see what I'm talking about and then 
you're going to put clips in and you're going to stitch from top to bottom here with a quarter inch seam allowance both both sides I'll do the same this side Th this black line is where I'm going to be stitching I just put it on there so that you could see put a pin in I need two pairs of hands with the camera under my <laughs> under my nose <laughs> there we are um, there's my clips so I'm now going to go and stitch these two straight lines everything is a straight line on this bag there's nothing curvy or difficult okay so I've stitched that that's the bottom there. you can't see the stitching but it's underneath that black line or should I say on top of it We're now going to do exactly the same as we did for the outside of our bag with our lining. So take one of your lining panels for either the front or the back of the bag, place your uh, bottom piece of fabric face down so that right sides are together, line up the edges and then clip them in place. And then you're going to stitch them together with a quarter of an inch seam allowance along here. So that's now stitched and I'm going to pull this down and finger press my crease. That way it's going to lay nice and neatly while I align my next piece of fabric up. And that's going to be the other panel and I'm going to place that face down so that my sides align with the previous panel. I'll turn this around just so that I can see what I'm doing. And then pin that in place. Or clip, whatever you prefer. I prefer clips. And you're now going to stitch along here using a quarter of an inch seam allowance to join the two fabrics together. So that's our seam. We can now pull this back. Finger press it in position. And if you want to, you can also give it a light pressing. And we're now going to trim up these edges. So line up your ruler with the um, the two panels and then just trim off and then you're going to do the same on the other side we're now going to add our side panels you're going to place these face down on the sides as you did previously and you're going to stitch down until you reach here, the, the, the seam. But on one side you need to leave a gap. Let me just clip this in place for this one. And we need to leave a gap so that when we put the lining with the bag we've got um, a space in which to turn it and then we will um, stitch it up by hand afterwards. It doesn't need to be very big, just enough to get everything through. So I'm going to mark with a pin. And I'm going to do the same further down. I'm probably going to leave a good hands width because we have to take into account the thickness of our bag because it's quite padded as well. So 
we're going to stitch from the top down to here from here to where our um, crease is there and we do the uh, on this side we're going to do the whole lot again quarter of an inch seam allowance so there's my stitching and this is the gap that I've left on the side we're now going to trim this up again aligning your ruler to the panel for down here because we're going to be joining this to this afterwards I'm going to leave a little bit of seam allowance there just to make life easier so I'm going to cut along this fold here and I'm going to do the same for the other side it doesn't have to be much just enough to make life easy for yourself like so okay so you want to give everything a quick press so that all your seams are set and then I'm just going to fold that in for a second where this seam, seam is at the bottom here of the of the bag I'm just going to mark onto here like that so next as we did for the previous one we're now going to join the sides and we want where we mark that line I'll put it on this side as well so that we can see both sides we want that line to be on sorry <laughs> I was out of shot we want this line to be on this seam And then we're just going to line the edges up from bottom to top. We're going to do the same on this side. And where that little bit of fabric that we left will join on to the bottom of the bag. And then we're going to stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance all the way down both sides. So all my sides are now stitched. We're now going to do the bottom of the bag. So line up the side along with the bottom and then clip it in place. we're now going to stitch along there using a quarter inch seam allowance and that will go on the line that I've drawn on here so that you can see so that's the bottom of my bag stitched and we're now going to put it all together So when we left this, it was out the wrong way. I've turned it out the right way. There's the inside, there's the out. And you want to leave your lining out the wrong way because we're going to place this inside our lining. I'm going to do this off camera because otherwise I'm going to keep knocking the camera. But I'll show you afterwards. So the bottom of my bags are together. 
both fabric right sides of the fabrics are together and that's the in, that's the inside of my bag that's going to be hidden soon so what we need to do is where, everywhere where there's a corner so here we're going to line up to this one and clip it in place and we'll start with the corners here's the next one and I'm going to put one in the middle and then I'm going to do the same the other end and I'm going to have my seams facing towards the sides I don't think it really makes much difference but that's what I'm doing I'm sure some someone who knows anything about sewing I know absolutely nothing can tell us why that is and I do apologize I am an embroiderer not a sewer so if I make this look difficult it really isn't but um, I'm sure somebody with much better experience than me could do a better job okay so now we're going to do the um, front and back along the the top of the front and back let me know in the comments if you do this differently I'm always willing to learn and now the other side I prefer putting the lining on the outside rather than the in simply because I find that the lining is always baggier than the outside so doing it this way it kind of takes up the slack okay so now we're going to stitch all the way around using a quarter of an inch seam allowance as before right the way round so that's the top of my bag stitched all round and we're now going to do the reveal we're going to turn it out the right way and that's what the gap was for that we left on the side I'll try to do this without knocking the camera but I can't promise it will <laughs> I'll be successful <laughs> going to close up the gap you can either hand stitch this or machine stitch it it's entirely up to you just just close to the edge a line of stitching there or if you're doing it by hand as I do um, then invisible stitching just left right left right weave it through and uh, then uh, we're nearly there okay I've done most of it but I'll show you in the last inch how I do this stitch whichever side your thread finishes on so I've got my two pieces of fabric here and it's easier if you press them because it gives you a channel then to aim for take your needle opposite your thread where it ends on one side you dig in And I can't see properly <laughs> and come up so on that side that side is where my thread ended I've gone in up right opposite then push through pull it and then you do the opposite the other side so there's where my oops, my thread ends and I'm going to go through on the other side now opposite where it stops it's very quick it's very easy and if you do it right it's invisible and I can't see a thing that I'm doing I'm so sorry <laughs> I'm 
make everything look so difficult and yet it really is not. <laughs> and now the other side again. And don't do too big a stitches because otherwise you're going to end up with gaps. I think some people call this ladder stitch. Let me know what you call it. More, last one. And then I'm just going to do a tiny, tiny stitch here, wrap it round and off. And then I poke mine down through the seam where I stopped. I would <laughs> if I could get hold of it. There we go down through the seam and come up anywhere put it tight trim off and when you pull it your thread disappears now push the lining inside our bag and push the corners down into the corners And then you're going to press the seam so that it sits all nice and flat. And if you want to, um, you can then top stitch all the way around the edge just to hold that in nice and neatly in place. So there it is. I've pressed my edges so they're all nice and neat. I'm not going to bother top stitching. It doesn't need it. But we now need to make some straps. So we're going to be making two straps and they're made in exactly the same way as we did for the tabs so it's just like bias binding and then I've stitched down each side so there's my fabric you decide how wide you want your strap first off I've done mine at um, it's going to finish up at an inch and then you multiply that by four, so four inches, which is 100 millilitres, millimetres. And I made each one 32 inches long, which is 800 millimetres. Then you fold it in half, press it, then fold the edges in, press again, and then fold it in half again, and press again. It doesn't take long. Then you're going to stitch um, down the two sides and across the ends. And you only need, I think I used um, two millimetres, two, three millimetres um, seam allowance, and uh, which is two eighths of an inch. So by the time you've finished, you'll have a strap that looks like that. I haven't sewn the, uh, the ends on these yet, but I am going to. Now, if you want a padded strap, which is what I've done, I've used some heat and bond, and I've made that, uh, I think it's a fraction under an inch wide, so that when it's folded up or, or pressed onto my fabric and inside, everything ends up at one inch. Now when you do your um, straps leave however much you're going to use as an overturn to attach to your clips leave that uh, without any um, padding because it makes it so much easier when you come to stitch that in place. So I'm going to press my um, heat and bond onto my strap so there's my gap without any heat and bond at the ends and I'm now going to go and stitch these closed once you've made both your straps make sure that they're exactly the same length and then you're going to add your hardware and I'm just putting clips on mine so I'm going to pop that through there and then I will stitch a box with a cross 
on to close it and that will make it nice and strong and that way if you've got anything weighty in your bag it's going to hold without any problem whatsoever and try and get your ends the same length so that's the first one and you're going to do the same on the second as well so that's all the clips put onto my straps and we now have to put our D-rings onto the tabs of our bag so to open your D-ring take two pairs of pliers put one each side and then twist so that it opens up take your bag, I've already put the other three on thread it through and then take your pliers once more and you're going to do the same in reverse and by twisting rather than pulling them apart you don't end up with a gap in the join and that's your hardware in place so now all we need to do is clip our handles on or should I say shoulder straps and that's our poppy bag complete how easy was that i hope you enjoyed this stitch along if you did please give me a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to be notified of new videos as soon as they're published do pop along to creative kiwi's facebook group there's always lots of ideas help and inspiration there for everybody and thank you very much for joining me you'll find a link to this design in the video description below along with lots of other things such as where I get my supplies and some discount codes for you as well. Mm -hmm.